Today we're going to look at a nice functional inequality. And this inequality is strong enough that we'll be able to determine exactly what the function is. Okay, so the setup is that we have a function from natural numbers to natural numbers satisfying the condition that f of 1 is 1. And then for all n bigger than or equal to 1, we know that f of n divided by f of n plus 1 is less than f of n plus 1 divided by f of n plus 1, which is less than f of n plus 2 divided by f of n plus 1. Okay, so let's maybe start with a bit of exploration just so that we could probably end up guessing some formula for the function and, and then that'll give us something to prove. Okay, so let's say we take n equals 1 and we plug it into our functional inequality. So we're going to start over here with this left-hand por portion. So we have f of 1, which is 1, over f of 2 is less than, so we have f of 2 here over f of 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is less than, well, let's see, we've got f of 1 plus 2, 3 over, well, another f of 2. Okay, so we've got something like that. But that's just begging us to clear the denominators. So if we multiply this entire thing by 2 times f of 2, then what is this going to look like? Well, we're going to have a 2 over here on this left part. And then let's see, in the middle, we're going to have f of 2 squared. And then on that right part, we're going to have the number 6. So that means f of 2 squared is a perfect square between 2 and 6, but obviously there's only one perfect square between 2 and 6, and that's the number 4, and thus f of 2 must be equal to 2. Now if you've solved many functional equations, you know a lot of the times the solutions are f of x equals x, or in this case, since we're using n as the variable, f of n equals n. And, well, that looks like it's going to be the case here from our first two cases. So we've got f of 1 is 1, f of 2 is 2. But now let's maybe do one more round of exploration to see if this maybe continues to hold true. And then after that, we can maybe make a conjecture and prove it. So let's plug in n equals 2. So that's going to give us 2 over f of 3 is less than f of 3 over 3, which in turn is less than 4 over f of 3. But now what we'll do is take this and multiply the whole thing by 3 times f of 3 and hopefully get some simplification. So let's see, over here on this left portion, we're going to get 6, which is less than f of 3 squared, which in turn is less than 12. But again, there's only a single perfect square between 6 and 12, and that's 9. So we have f of 3 squared is equal to 9, which tells us that f of 3, yes, it is equal to 3. So just by exploration, we see the first three values here satisfy this maybe typical guess for a functional equation or a functional inequality problem where you always end up with the identity function. So let's make that our claim and then we'll prove it using induction. So like I said, we were ready to make a claim and that claim is that, well, our function is the identity function. So it takes any input and just makes that the output. Okay, and also, like I said, we wanted to prove this using mathematical induction. And so that always starts with a base case. But we don't really need a base case here because that's given for us in, well, one of the conditions of the problem. So we have f of 1 equals 1. That serves as the base case. And then, well, let's also observe that during our exploration, we saw that f of 2 was equal to 2 and f of 3 was equal to 3. So in fact, essentially we have three base cases even though you know we only need the one that was given to us. Okay, so now let's do our induction step. So let's suppose we have some sort of number k which is a natural number such that f of k 
equals k. And then, well, of course, what we want to do here is prove that f of k plus 1 is k plus 1. And that will maybe be the end of the proof using the principle of mathematical induction. Okay, so what we want to do is plug n equals k into our functional inequality. So I'm just going to write it as is without maybe using our induction hypothesis over here first. So we've got f of k over k plus 1 is less than f of k plus 1 over f of k plus 1, which in turn is less than f of k plus 2 over f of k plus 1. Okay, great. But now, well, I'm going to take this f of k here and scrub it out and replace it with a k. And I'll do the same thing for the f of k here and here. And of course, I want to do that because, well, we're using our induction hypothesis over there. But now we'll clear denominators. And I guess it goes without saying that we can clear denominators without worry of, you know, switching the inequality because we are within positive integers here. So in this case, we'll clear the denominators by multiplying by k plus 1 times f of k plus 1. And let's see, that's going to give us something like this. We have k times k plus 1 on the extreme left-hand part. In the middle, we have f of k plus 1 squared. And then on the right, we're going to have k plus 1 times k plus 2. But now, let's extend these off in either direction. So over here, we see that k times k plus 1, well, that's pretty clearly bigger than k squared. And then this k plus 1 times k plus 2, that's pretty clearly smaller than k plus 2 squared. So let's see. We know our number, f of k plus 1 squared, is strictly between k squared and k plus 2 squared. But there's a single perfect square between those two. And of course, it's k plus 1 squared. So we have f of k plus 1 squared is k plus 1 squared. And thus, f of k plus 1 is k plus 1. But like I said before, that's where we needed to end in order to finish this proof by induction. And that's a good point.